I grew up in an interesting time. It was a time when personal technology really started to permeate every part of life. The biggest change was the smartphone and everyone having cameras in their pocket. And something I always think about is how amazing it is that my future kids will know almost everything about me. They're not gonna know it because I'm great at telling stories, but because they will actually be able to see and watch what it was like for me to grow up. From my early days in school to meeting lifelong friends, traveling, even meeting my wife and seeing that relationship grow. All of that is documented forever. And that is something that was never really possible before my generation. But now it is. And that's thanks in part to this. The iPhone 13 has gotten a lot of flack for being boring. Apple's phoning it in. It's the same thing over and over. But I disagree. You know, new tech is fun. It's always fun to get a new design. It's fun to get new features. But I look at tech a little bit differently. I'm looking at what this product can do for me and how is it going to really integrate into my life. And this applies to every piece of tech. It's not just phones, but really anything you use. It's not so much the technology, but how much closer does it get me to my goals? That's why I fell in love with technology to begin with. Now for me, the reason the iPhone and devices like it are important is not because of the tech. It's because of the memories I create with it. That's something that's very important to me. I like having that ability in my pocket. Now that reason is different for really everyone. Maybe you are creating art with it. Maybe you're running your business with it. Maybe you're just answering emails or even it's just the lifeline that you use to talk to your friends and family. That reason is different for almost everybody, but whatever that reason is, you're using the iPhone, not because it's an iPhone necessarily, but because of where it gets you and what it can let you accomplish. I saw this tweet from Brandon from This Is Tech Today who makes some great stuff, by the way. You should definitely check him out. But he was asking, what is Apple's message? What are they trying to sell us with the iPhone? What do they want us to feel? I, like I think a lot of people, think that Apple has gotten a little cheesy lately. They have some over-the-top ads, it's a little scripted, doesn't feel quite as natural. But when you dig below that, you find that Apple's message and what they're trying to sell you is the same as what it's always been. And it's not an iPhone. It's in Apple's DNA that technology alone is not enough. That it's technology married with liberal arts, married with the humanities, that yields us the result that makes our hearts sing. It's not a secret. Apple tells you. They want you to believe they have the tools to let you do anything. The devices they make will let you get your creativity out there. That's the message they have always been trying to sell. The question is though, did Apple create a product with the iPhone 13 Pro that accomplishes that mission? I was hesitant about this feature because as someone who makes videos for a living, I have nice cameras that have shallow depth of field and I can rack focus. I know how to do that because it's my job. So in terms of a feature that I am personally excited about, uh, not so much. But I do think it is possible this could help unlock that creativity, much like happened to me when I was using tech in the early days. I think the quality of cinematic mode is, it depends how you're watching it. If you're watching it back on your phone or something phone size, like on YouTube or whatever, it actually looks quite good. There's a lot of times where it's very deceiving. You don't see the fuzziness on the edges quite as much as you would if you're watching like on a big TV screen. So I think that is where it really depends how it's going to look. A few tips for cinematic mode though. It really, it kind of overdoes it a little bit, I think in my opinion. The blur is a little too strong sometimes, so I would definitely go in and edit the blur. So for instance, this is kind of what it came out of the camera as, but this is now adjusted. I think it looks a lot better if you do some tweaking after the fact. 
And to do that editing, it's pretty simple. All you have to do is go to the video as if you would any other video and hit edit. And then you'll have these little points where it automatically changed focus for you using its AI and intelligence. It usually does a pretty good job of, you know, detecting what you want to have in focus, but not always. So here you can adjust the blur amount. You can adjust what is in focus and the controls are pretty seamless. It's actually impressive how much you have control over these clips. And when you dial it in, there are sometimes when it's rather impressive. If you don't dial it in though, that's when things can start to look very fake. Now, if I'm honest, I don't see myself using this feature all that much right now. Now in the future, when it gets better and the edge detection gets better and it looks a lot more convincing, I think like, you know, Portrait Mode for Photos does today. When that first came out, that feature, it was not very good, but now over time, Portrait Mode has gotten better and better. I fully expect that with the video cinematic mode as well. There's no way it's not going to get better over time. And I can definitely see a point in time where it will be convincing enough that I use it a lot. Right now though, I think it's more for those specialty items, those specialty shots, especially for social media, when you're sharing with your family, it just gives it a little bit more uniqueness that you couldn't really get before. And I was expecting cinematic mode to really suck, let's be honest here. But it's better than I thought, although still needs a little bit of ways to go, I think. This is a feature I never expected to come out. It's kind of an interesting take on filters, although it goes a step further, especially for those who love the way different cameras take different photos. For instance, you have a Samsung phone that is really punchy and vibrant. You have a Pixel that's really cool and contrasty. You can actually make your phone look like that with photographic styles. Now, by default, the options that they have for you to just choose don't change the image all that much. I was expecting more of a difference, but I am actually happy about that. It's subtle. It changes the effect of the photo rather than just slapping something over the top of it. That is a nice subtlety that I can actually see myself using instead of, you know, just a filter. But you can also go in and tweak them and create your own so that the photo looks exactly the way you want as you take it. It's a nice feature. I haven't gone in and dialed it in perfect enough to set it for my own photos all the time, but I'm going to be experimenting it with it more and hopefully we'll get to that point. I was not expecting to be chasing bugs around, but hey, when you have a macro lens, you can actually do that. And the photos turned out surprisingly good. I like that this works with video. I'm glad that this is a usable sensor that gives you high quality images. I don't know how often I'm going to be using it, but the option is there. That kind of seems like the theme of this camera is that there's a lot more options now that we just didn't have before. Whether or not you're going to use them, that's a different story, but the fact that they are there, if you need them, you have them that is a good upgrade to this camera. But by far, my favorite thing about this camera system is the actual hardware, the new lenses, the new sensors. I was not expecting a difference, but the difference is there. I think Smart HDR 4 is doing a noticeably better job than Smart HDR did before. Especially when you have very high contrast situations where things are in the shadow and you have highlights, I mean, these types of photos are just hard to get unless you have a great HDR system and Smart HDR 4 is doing that. Also in low light, the photos are noticeably sharper and cleaner. That was something I was not expecting, but the fact that it is here means we're, you know, one step closer to this being the only camera you really need all the time. I wasn't expecting the iPhone to get as many updates as it did to the camera. Usually in these smaller jumps between versions of phones, you don't expect that many changes, especially to something like the camera, but I'm surprised how much of a difference there is here. The rest of this phone is, well, it's not that different than the iPhone 12 that came before it. The main thing with the Pros that I was excited to try is the ProMotion display. I have the iPad Pro and I've been using the 120 Hertz on that display for quite a while. Of course, I've been using it on other phones as well. So having it on an iPhone finally is great. Now I've often said that a high refresh rate screen is not something I'm clamoring for and I still kind of hold to that. Once you get used to it, the effect kind of fades away in the background. Although if you do hold it next to a phone that doesn't have a high refresh rate screen, that's when you really start to see it. But I'm glad it's here. It's something that I think should have been here for a few years. Now that it's here, I'm happy. 
And another small feature of the screen, which I almost forgot to talk about, is the notch. It's now 20% smaller, and it doesn't really make a difference. I wish I could do a little bit more with the extra space that it creates. I wish I could bring back the battery percentage, or maybe adjust the icons that I see up in the ears. But you can't, it's the same old thing. I'm hoping for a software update there though, because it would just make having that space a little more useful. I was never really happy with the iPhone 12 Pro Max battery. That was the phone that I used, which is the biggest battery that they offered before, and it never really felt like it was a stellar battery, especially compared to the 11 that came before it. But now with the 13, the batteries are bigger all across the board. So with the 13 Pro getting about an hour and a half more, and with the 13 Pro Max getting two and a half hours, according to Apple's ratings. Now, is that true? It's kind of hard to tell. Battery is so dependent on what you're actually doing with the phone. I'm someone who is a pretty heavy user and I also like to keep the brightness pretty high. Now we have 120 Hertz, so that is sipping a little bit more juice as well, but I have found the battery to be pretty solid. It doesn't feel worse than it was before, although I'm gonna need a little bit more time to see if it's actually better, but, but I'm hopeful. It's easy to be kind of cynical about tech, especially when we live in a world that is iterating so quickly. And you know, I get it, obviously. Do I wish that this new iPhone 13 Pro had an always on display like it was rumored? Do I wish it had an in-screen fingerprint reader and face ID? Do I wish the notch was completely gone? Sure, those are all really cool feats of technology that I would love to have in this phone, but they wouldn't really change how I use this phone and what I do with it. When I take a step back and look at what's truly important to me, the iPhone 13 Pro is fulfilling that and it's doing it better than ever. And as cheesy as I know it sounds, this phone is going to help me create those memories that I will look back on and the quality of it is better than ever. And if it helps me fulfill my goals and that's why I'm really enjoying this phone so far. If the tech in our pocket was there, just for the sake of being cool tech, that would get boring really fast. I like what I can do with this phone and I think that makes it worth it.